What are some other problems that Paul is finding with the church in Corinth? That's what we're going to talk about next in 1 Corinthians 5. Well, we've heard about all these issues that's been going on in the church of Corinth, and they're pretty smug about it because they're very wealthy and they have, they feel like everything that they need. But now he talks about sexual immorality among them and that it is the kind that is not even tolerated among the pagans. One man is with his father's wife. Boy, he says, you should know, you should know you're all arrogant about this, but you'd be mourning about this. this is embarrassing and this is horrifying you know, to you. What has been done to remove him from among you? He's blatantly sinning. And though absent in the body, he's not there. He's there with you in spirit. He's trying to help you in spirit. And he says, I've already pronounced my judgment on the one who did this thing. That guy, he is out of the church. He can't be there because he is immoral. I was listening to various pastors talk about this, and this is where it gets to be very difficult. Because um, he was said that a man was talking to him about how he's going to divorce his wife. And he, as a pastor, was like, do not divorce your wife. No, do not. This is a sin. You, you're not divorcing her for the very few reasons that are given that you can divorce your wife. No. And then the guy did it. And the guy started coming back to him and wanting to talk about other issues. And he says, no, no, no. I'm not talking to you about any issues except for you getting rid of the sin that you've created in your life and going back to your wife. At some point, because these are stewards of the church, they have to stand firm. And he is saying, I am standing firm, particularly with this one individual. And in the name of Jesus, I'm present with you, with the power of Christ. You are to deliver this man to Satan for his destruction of the flesh. He is living a fleshly, non-godly world It says in the end, his last sentence, he says, quote, and this is ESV, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. There's still hope for him. He cannot stand like this. If he just thinks everything is good and hunky-dory and everything's fine and everything's going to be fine, he's not going to be able to stand up and eventually be saved from this. He is already lost. Interestingly enough, the word sexual immorality that was first used is Porninea, which is going to be where we get the word porn, but essentially scriptural values when it comes to sexuality. In this world, everyone's like, it's no big deal. Give up on it. No, it was a big deal. It's a big deal to Jesus, and it is something that has to stand. It is a reason to be removed from a church. The suggestion, too, about the man who is with his father's wife is that she must not even be a Christian because she's not talked about like she has to be kicked out of the church either or something like that. So she's probably not even a Christian. So all of this is going on. They seem to be accepting it. They don't seem to be doing anything about it. And this whole question was being said that this the 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 sins that are going on in this church are things that not even the not even the pagans are tolerating. They felt that this was probably incest, that Cicero, even at this time, spoke against is incest. So these are some pretty big sins that are going on. And again, you're not doing anything. You're boasting about it. You're not bothering to be. And you're so arrogant. You're so set in your own ways that you don't even think that this is a problem. And he says, you know what? We're going to bring up that leavening thing. Again, leavening is a thing that rises bread, you know, from flour to make it into bread. And he says, don't you know that a little leavening spreads throughout the entire lump of of uh, dough, that you have to clean this out so that you can be a new lump. I like this translation, a new lump. Because if you keep it in, it's just going to spoil a whole lot of you. You're all going to go down with this guy who's clearly sinning. And he says, you know, let's not celebrate the festival with old leaven, evil, malice, all the bad things, but instead kick it out and stick to the things that are sincere and true. Don't associate yourself with these immoral people, not the sexually immoral, the greedy, the swindlers, the idolaters. But he's not saying that the people in the world that you're supposed to get away from. Remember, Jesus hung out with the very worst of people because he wanted to bring them back. But when they are your brothers in the church, that's when you have to get rid of them. 
we cannot tolerate this happening in the church. We can we can't avoid it in the world. If we did, we'd have to leave planet Earth in order to get away from these people. But if it's a brother, meaning someone in the church, who's doing these things, you're not even supposed to eat with someone like that. And he even says, what are we to do with judging the outside, people outside the church? But those inside the church, those are the ones whom we're supposed to judge, and God will judge the outside. Purge evil, he says, from among you. This is hard talk. I always thought that was kind of interesting. When I wasn't a Christian, it always struck me that they were trying to go around and tell people how they were sinning, judging people outside of the church. And yet things were going on inside of the church that they were ignoring, that they weren't even paying attention to. And this was, in my opinion, as a non-Christian, going about it the wrong way. I don't believe what you believe. So why in the world would I follow your moral standards? But the people who are inside your church, they do, in theory, believe what you believe, and therefore they should be held to account. And I think that's what Paul is saying here, that you're not going to get away from sin in the world. The world, world is filled with it. It doesn't mean that you have to <laughs> absorb the entire world with you and have people hanging out with your kids or something, but it does mean that we're never going to leave sin. We're never going to get away from it. But instead, we should be very, very careful about the people who claim to be Christians. They are supposed to be held to this standard. And we're supposed to stand firm on those standards. We are supposed to judge. We're supposed to take care of things that are happening in our own congregations. This gets really hard. I mean, I've seen uh, people tell stories about congregations that have fallen apart when the pastor or people in the church call into account a, a person who is going astray and still pretending to be you know, a, a, an upstanding person in the church. This can split people down the middle. I mean, because that person has family, they have kids, they have relatives, they have friends, and that can be a big part of it. But it's important enough to Paul to say that this little bit of leavening, which makes me think that the whole thing is happening at Passover time, because he talks about uh, celebrating the festival, he's giving them that example that a, a little bit of bad leavening will infect the entire church. Well, if that guy gets to sleep with his mother-in-law, why can't I do what I want to do? That people inside the church are supposed to be a new people, a new congregation, a new brotherhood, and they're going to hold their lives up and, and try to follow in Christ's way. Of course, we're not going to do it all the time. We're going to see more about what to do inside of a church when things go wrong in other uh, books and letters in the New Testament, but it's important that we understand standards have to be upheld. Another interesting part is it says that in Corinthians 5 9, he says, I have written to you in my letters. So there were other letters, he has written them before. And so this brings the question are we missing something in the Old Testament? And I think the general being is, is not everything that every apostle ever wrote was God-breathed, was meant to be in the scriptures, was infallible. So there are going to be places that we hear of in other books that just aren't a part of our scriptures, and they're just not meant to be. So that's kind of an interesting part of it. But he's already warned them about this, and he's warning them again about this whole piece. So this is tough talk. What I'm going to meditate on is that idea of, I guess, standards. Standards that we have when it comes to things that happen inside the church, and standards that happen outside the church. It is difficult, I think, to decide that we're going to start preaching everybody's sins or telling everybody's sins when they don't believe in God and they don't believe in Jesus. This is something that we need to work out among believers. If I told someone who's a Buddhist, you're sinning, they wouldn't care. Just like if someone who is a Buddhist says, you know, you're such a lowly creature on this earth, you're going to be reincarnated as a worm. I don't believe that. So it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't make sense to talk to people outside of the church about their sins, to be quite honest. But inside the church, we have to have those standards and we have to have them stand up to what Christ expects out of his church. What I'm going to pray about is that I always have the strength to tell the truth when it's difficult. I think that this particular passage about him talking about this leavening inside the church is probably one of the hardest conversations I've heard an apostle have to have 
yet. And so I'm going to pray that we all have the compassion, prayerful spirit, the Holy Spirit working with us to be able to do this correctly. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact that we are expected to have a higher standard inside of the church, that we are expected to follow in Christ's word. And when people do things to this extent, where he's saying that even the pagans don't even do these things, it's time that we have to take action so that our own church stays devoted to Christ. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you going through these hard lessons with me. If you have anything that you want to say to me or anything I can pray about for you, please remember you can email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. Please pray for me. Um, I hope that the study is interesting and beneficial to you. Again, we're learning a lot of things that is being said to this very young church, probably within a couple of decades after Jesus died on the cross, and we're already having these kinds of problems. So you can see Paul trying to be a father to his group. I appreciate you joining me on this. Have a great weekend.